allegations and have no factual Mr. Sauer, thing to, 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 to pick it up? The gentlewoman has not been recognized. I'd like, Mr. Sauer, uh, you deposed Dr. Fauci last fall? Uh, in that deposition, <clears throat> you asked him the question. You said, is it important for people to have access to both sides of the debate so they can assess what's good information and what's bad information? Remember that question you asked, Dr. Fauci? And here's, here was his response. He said, Dr. Fauci said, well, you know, it depends. If information is clearly inadequate and statistically not sound, there can be a danger in people <clears throat> who don't have the ability or the experience to understand. Mr. Sauer, do you forfeit your First Amendment rights if you can't tell good information from bad information? That's not how our First Amendment works, is it? You need to turn on your mic if you can, Mr. Sauer. Is the First Amendment only those for, who, uh, uh, for those people who have the ability to, or experience to understand? No, it is for all Americans. All Americans, all 330 million of us, is that right? That's correct. Not just for the special people, not just for the super smart people like Dr. Fauci, who worked 40 years in our government, highest paid guy. Not just for them, it's for all of us, right? Absolutely right. Even if maybe you don't know the difference sometimes between what's good or bad information, you still have your First Amendment liberties under our Constitution. Both to hear and to speak, absolutely. Exactly right. By the way, when you deposed Dr. Fauci, did, how many times did he happen to say he didn't know or couldn't remember? He said, I do not recall or variations thereof 174 times, and adding in a variations of I don't remember at least 212 times. Wow. Smartest man on the planet couldn't remember 212 times? He couldn't remember things, including things that he had told the national media, quote, I remember it very well. Then he would say 16 times, I don't recall details of that meeting. Now, now you, uh, is that, you went to, you were near the top of your class at Harvard Law School, Rhodes Scholar, is that right, Mr. Sauer? Uh, uh, I've submitted a biographical statement. Yeah, well, I, uh, I, I looked at your, your biography, it's pretty impressive. Is that pretty high? You've done a lot of depositions, you've done a lot of legal work, you've deposed a lot of people, is 212 times pretty high? I've taken dozens of depositions. I've never seen anything like it, including in this case where other federal government witnesses frequently profess inability to recall. So the guy who told us all these things, who was, you know, the smartest man on the planet, he set a record. Highest you've ever seen and not re couldn't recall, didn't remember. Can I've never seen it? anything like it. Okay, page four of your testimony, you talk about the censorship enterprise. You give a bunch of facts and numbers here. You said Twitter disclosed that 84 government officials communicated with them, or as Mr. Seligman said, gave them suggestions. 84 federal officials gave Twitter suggestions on tweets and things to take down. 45 officials in the federal government told the same thing to Facebook. Is that right? They, they discussed disinformation and censorship with those officials. Yeah, a handful of federal agencies handed over 20,000 pages of documents in the communications they'd had with these big tech companies. Again, just suggestions, though, according to Mr. Seligman. Uh, 20 White House officials were involved in these suggestions to, uh, to um, uh, these social media platforms. That's conservative. It's probably higher. Yeah. FBI agent Elvis Chan testified the FBI loan sends encrypted list to social media accounts, sometimes containing hundreds of accounts and URLs in each list, two platforms for censorship, one to five times per month. 500 times a month, 500 different email ad, or uh, websites, everything else they're sending to these social media platforms. The FBI, and Mr. Seligman says, don't worry, that's not a problem with the First Amendment, that's a suggestion. Yes, over the course of years that's been occurring. The Election Integrity Partnership, a censorship consortium of academics, think tanks, federal, state, government officials, social media platforms boast that it surveilled 859 million tweets, 21,897,364 tweets on tickets as misinformation. Is that right? That's correct. You, all, you learned this in your discovery in your, in your uh, lawsuit so far? Correct, Your Honor. And the Virality Project, a mass surveillance and censorship operation conducted by the EIP, has done over 6.7 million engagements on social media, 200 million. Now, let me just ask you this. Was, were most of those targets uh, towards conservatives? Virtually everything we've seen in evidence so far, or at least the vast majority of what we've seen in so far, is conservative right-leaning speech. But you would be just as outraged. I read your testimony. You'd be just as outraged if it was the other way around, right? Absolutely. Because Same you here. Same here, because the First Amendment, again, is not just for some people, not just for one political persuasion, not just for the so-called smart people like Dr. Fauci. It's for 330-some million Americans. That's how our Constitution works. Is that right, Mr. Sauer? Every single American. 
I thank the gentleman uh, uh, for his uh, for his answers. Uh, Mr. Anderson Chairman, consent. I have a unanimous consent request. Gentleman from Louisiana is recognized. Uh, seek unanimous consent to enter into the record a letter dated January 12, 2021, by Louisiana Attorney General Jeff Landry, where he decries all political violence and calls for an end to that and uh, asks for respect for all political viewpoints. Without objection. Another so thing we can examine because he's the, not the, here. Uh, very good. No, you can Thank examine you. it. It's a document. He's going to no he's examine him for what he wrote and the intent yeah. behind what he said. Well, I would but, just okay. I would, I would just on. point out that that's that's uh, unanimous consents are for, are for documents, and we got the document Mr. right Chairman, here that he handed to you. Mr. Chairman, I would ask unanimous consent. The chair now recognizes Ms. Mr. Wasserman. Mr. Chairman, I, for her five I have minutes. a unanimous oh. consent request, Mr. Chairman. Pardon? I have a unanimous. Oh, okay, gentlelady is recognized for unanimous consent. 